it to God again. Praise God. Praise God. He's worthy. He's worthy. Create your own atmosphere. Don't have somebody pay for you. Create. Let your cipher be filled. Let your cipher, your circle of influence, be strong enough to bless the person next to you. I, um, somebody told me, you playing hooky? No, no, I'm not. They let us out early today. They let us out early. Thank you, Jesus. We need those every now and again, right? And I said, well, they let us out early, so uh, let, me go, uh, let me go home. Um, interesting class today. And I, I realized that there's this area where the torch has to be passed on. And we as believers, we, we got to know that all of life does not circulate around what we know. Sit down for me, okay, guys, sit down. Um, and before I introduce the two speakers for tonight, the ones who are going to bring the word, I just want to share something with you guys really fast. You know, I've always heard growing up the whole thing about, you know, Jesus coming now, right? And all the signs are there. Back in 1988, they had this, these people, they were certain that Jesus was going to come back in, in that year. You remember that? And what they did was, it wasn't really this intense prophecy or prophetic word, it what it was, was they just calculated from 1948 to 1988. 1948 was when Israel became a state. And they said, well, 1948, 1988, 40 years, 40 years in the desert. All right, that makes sense. It works. And here we are. We're still here, guys. Then, um, then you heard about the whole thing in 1967, because then somebody came out and said, well, if it didn't happen in 1988, then it must mean when Israel took over Jerusalem. The clock wasn't started there. Sure enough, the rumor came about where 1967 was when Israel was uh, dominated or took over Jerusalem for the very first time in a long time. Six day war. In six days, they annihilated they annihilated all of the different um, uh, countries that were around them, all their enemies, annihilated. Six days. And on the seventh day, they rested. Sound familiar? But now we're in 2017. 1967, 2017. It's about 50 years. Am I right? 50 years? Wow. And so then you have those who say, well, wow, 50 years, that means that it must be the time of Jubilee. Yeah, Jubilee doesn't mean that Jesus is going to break open the sky and come down. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I believe in a second coming. I believe. I believe that that's going to happen. It's going to take place. But what I don't believe is that it's predicated on the disasters. Amen. What I don't believe, and no one's going to ever convince me, that it's based on all the things that are happening. Because every generation has a bad moment. Do you believe that every generation feels like they're the generation? Yeah. That's true. Think about that. We are alive now, so we think we're the ones. How do you think they felt in the 40s when World War II was going on? And wow, who fits the best description of, of, uh, of, of the Antichrist but Hitler? Right. Good. He fit the description. Everybody was like, yeah, he's got to be the Antichrist because he's killing all the Jews. Good. He was doing exactly what the, what the book of Revelation said that the Antichrist was going to do. So what do you think that generation thought? Right. That generation said, oh, it's the end of the world. That's it. It's over. It's the end of the world. Bombs and people dying left and right. What about if we go years before that? The bubonic plague. Your next door neighbor was dying in days. People 
was, the, the streets were smelly. People were dying. Of, pestilence was all over the place. What do you think they thought back then? During the dark ages. I mean, we could continue. I could, I could give you time to every generation. Everybody feels like it's over. And so every generation, what they use is fear to draw people to Jesus. And I believe that God is saying, when is the generation going to get it right when we don't need fear as a factor to be at the feet? He's waiting to see if there's going to be a generation that's going to get it right and stop using fear to scare people to the feet of Jesus. What generation is going to get it right? Which generation is going to be old enough? Because you only scare kids scare each other. You know, they, they wait behind them. Who? And they get thrilled with that. Some of us, not even children, do that. And get thrilled. <laughs> See somebody get scared, get excited, laugh about it. We're not in the business of, of bringing and promoting fear. We're in the business of spreading the good news. Amen. Amen. What is the good news? The good news is I get to pass this microphone. <laughs> The good news is I get to sit down and I get to eat. I get to be with you. The good news is that I'm so sure of what DNA is in this house. That's the good news. We're all connected to a living God, a powerful God, an awesome God. And I still have my earpiece on. And no one said anything. Connected to the matrix. Praise God. I take it. Yeah, take it. The truth is, every farmer wants an opportunity to be under the tree that he planted. I planted the seed a long time ago. Two awesome seeds, too. Amen. Put them in the ground and watch them grow. And in the process, I was able to say, wow, Lord, your rain comes on time. Amen. I may plant the seed, but I don't control the weather. Right. Okay. The weather is not, I don't control. God says, okay, you did your part. Now I'll do mine. Yes. God is the one who makes sure that they grow. And it's, it's with great pleasure, with great honor. And what's, what a privilege. I'm glad that they, they allowed us to leave early today. Because I get to sit in. I know y'all saw my face and I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'm excited because you can't be wrong. Mm. You know why? Because you got good news in your mouth. That's good, huh? That's good. And then you have a bunch of people here who know how to pull. So we're going to be pulling. Thank you, Father. Be at peace. You're home. Let me ease you up a little bit. Everyone in here is family. This is no different than being in a living room. And talking like y'all know how to do. Amen. Good. Good. Amen. Why am I so comfortable when I'm here? Even if I was in front of thousands. Because family. I'm good. There's nothing. Listen, you can't tell me anything that's going to embarrass me. Right. I'll just embarrass myself and I won't be embarrassed. <laughs> that's good. That's good, Pop. So, I want you to feel the same way. Amen. There's nothing you can do that will make you fail. When you have good news in your mouth. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good, so these wonderful sisters um, have demonstrated what it means to serve God in spirit and in truth. Um, I was blessed because one of the ways which God used to connect this was I was uh, working back then. I was a Certified personal trainer, yeah, had, a, yeah. had a boot camp. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. <laughs> and, and, you know, God used that as a means of evangelism. Yeah. 
So I would, I would do this, right? After the workout, I would have everybody laid out. <laughs> Didn't open up the Bible, just had them all laid out. And started talking, speaking the word. She would be laid out, tears would come out of her eyes. Some people would start crying. Thank you, Jesus. Because the word was good. And it was disguised in a workout. Wow. Ah! It was disguised in a workout. I used a physical moment to bring a spiritual message. Hey. It was a life-changing 40 seconds. It sure was. Was it 40 seconds? 40 seconds. <laughs> 40 seconds. Remember that? 40 seconds. I need you to just stay quiet. Lay, lay down and allow, just breathe in and breathe out. And then that word one day hit her the way it hit you. And she became the answer prayer because you were praying for her. I will not take credit for that. You prayed. I was just an instrument, just like this microphone. I just worked. It just, it just turned on, see? And your prayers brought your sister. And God ain't done yet. Amen. Pastor Jaya. Deacon Ibelis. I am so wanting to let this microphone go. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to go up here, but you're going to stay down here. You're going to go up here? Praise the Lord. Go up there so I can pass it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. Let's give honor to God today. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Love you. spiritual dad will be here tonight because he wasn't supposed to be here. He surprised us upstairs. <laughs> Surprise, I'm here. <laughs> but it's only befitting because it's a privilege for me to be up here, not just up here, but to be up here with my sister Deacon Amen. 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 You see, she is, she represents what I had to go through when I first came to the Lord as far as understanding spiritual warfare. Because I was the only one who served Christ in my home. So she represented that for me because I, I knew how to speak. I knew certain words what to speak, but there was essence that I was missing, understanding that I was missing. And that, then when I met our spiritual father, God placed in him the ability to teach me what it is to have authority in what you speak. Now, to know what you speak, to know the essence of what you speak. Amen. Not just speak words to speak words, but to understand that what you're speaking is making an impact in the atmosphere. Amen. 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 So today we're, we're going to touch a little bit on authority. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? I want you to go with me to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 28. And if possible, I want someone to read it for me. It's from 28 to 31. Amen. Can someone read that for me? Thank you, Jocasta. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals scurrying along the ground. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit, and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as a food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry around the ground. Everything that has life. And this is what happened. So we see here that when God created humanity, 
He created humanity, but gave humanity the ability to have the authority and dominion over the earth, right? So from the beginning, we already had the authority to speak things, to move things into the, when it comes to the earth, when it comes to the natural order of things. God created all different types of things, from seed-bearing plants to creatures of all different sizes, yet he gave us a, I'm going to say creature, <laughs> that is fragile yet sensitive, but yet powerful of all that he created. So when it comes to the authority of everything that God created, we are the ones who have, who hold that authority. Adam, when he walked with God, he walked with God in the garden. He walked with him knowing that he had authority over everything, dominion over everything when it came to Eden. But us today, we don't just walk with God, we have God who dwells within us, amen? Amen, amen. so we have an access to him that Adam had. It may not be a face-to-face -face access, the way that you can see him, but we have him within us, which is even more powerful because we don't, God doesn't have to go looking for us. We're already there. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's good. So we have, when it comes to authority, you know authority, it comes in different ways. But to know the authority that you have, you have to have a knowledge of where your authority is coming from. Hey. Our authority comes from who? Uh -huh. So understanding God that we ourselves are made in his image and likeness, right? right? Amen. We're made in his image and likeness, which means we're like God. Amen. Amen. We're like who? God. Amen. <laughs> so we're made in his image and likeness, understanding that we know of him because we're like him. So it's not that we have to go into a textbook or go anywhere else to find out about God because we're like God. We look in the mirror, we see God. We see hey, each other, we hey, see God. Hey, so we don't have to go too far to know about God because we are like him, right? We are co-inheritors with who? Jesus Christ. So we have the same inheritance when it comes to the kingdom that Jesus Christ has as well. Amen? Amen. You can find that in Romans 8, 17 just in case. I'm like my daddy, back it up in scripture. <laughs> Another thing we need to know when it comes to, to your authority is not just knowing that your authority comes from God, not knowing that you can, you can bring heaven down to earth and move here as if the kingdom was here today. But also understanding that to have authority, you have to have authority over something or someone. Hence the reason why we have an enemy, right? So we have dominion, we have authority over the enemy. But that many times, for some reason, when we come face to face with a lot of things, we tend to forget our authority. We tend to forget that we have the ability to speak something into, into the atmosphere, to speak something into the situation, to shift the situation. That's right. Um, Elder Jen and Deacon Cynthia spoke two weeks ago about, about sound. Mm -hmm. And that teaching was so powerful because it lets us know that when it comes to our sound, it's not just empty words going into air. Yes. Our sound makes an impact when it comes to the atmosphere. It makes an impact to the point where when we speak something, amen, when we speak something, something has to shift. Yeah. Not because, not just because, but because we as inheritors, right, we as ambassadors of the kingdom mm. have spoken, right? Yeah. Here on earth, we, become, we are amb ambassadors of the kingdom. So we represent everything that God does up there, but we represent it here on earth. That's right. So everywhere we walk, everything has to work for us, not hey. us for it. Everything submits to us, not us to submit to it. So when we walk into a place and the place is heavy, it's not for us to now act heavy and now act with an attitude, but for us to understand and realize the heaviness that's already there and for us to now begin to speak, amen, Elder Sidney, begin to speak things into the atmosphere, begin to speak positivity, begin to speak joy because of the authority that we carry. Amen, are you with me? And when it comes to the opposer, I'm going to let the at least go a little more into that part. Come on now. Amen. Amen. That's good, Pastor. <laughs> you have to know your opposer. You need to know who's your enemy. Come with me to Genesis 3, verses 1 through 6. When you have to say amen, can I get it up there? The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals, the most astute of all the wild animals. The Lord God had made. 
One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. So here we see that Eve had conversed with the serpent. In order for her, the serpent to have had a conversation with her, there was a level of comfortability there, a level of confidence there. Right. What made you so comfortable? What made, what, why is your enemy so comfortable? Why, why does he have that comfortability to be able to ask you about your creator and things that God created already to be the way they are? There was a level of confidence and Eve was innocent, so sometimes we may not notice, we may not realize, we may not see by which way the enemy is coming at us. So she was deceived by the serpent. See, Eve was, Eve was able to hear the enemy, but Adam, who was with her, as you can see in verse 6, was not part of the conversation. The enemy knew whose ear it had. It knew who to go to. It knew who was the weak one and who it could attack. And the entry, it was the entry. Adam, who was the authoritative figure in the Garden of Eden, but also had free will to eat the fruit or not, his authority, his authority wasn't in question, but his decision-making was. See, God gives us free will. Eve allowed herself to make the decision instead of consulting with her authority figure, who was the priest of her home. For Adam and Eve, the opposer came by way of a serpent or by way of the fruit. So now I'm asked, what strategy is the enemy using to attack you? What person or thing is your opposer using to attack you or to infiltrate? Yeah. And you're not being aware, you're not. It, it's coming, it's being pictured so beautiful. Right. And you're being deceived. Right. Come on, this good. So I'm going to share a, tes a, a testimony. Before I came to Christ, sit down, I'm sorry. <laughs> Before I came to Christ, um, how I was deceived and how the enemy used uh, this lady who, was, who came to me like a mother figure. And I met this lady uh, at a therapist's place. We were both getting um, therapy for, both had ankle injuries. She had one foot, I had another foot injured. And um, the therapist's place would uh, provide transportation and pick us up every day at a certain time and take us back home. So during that time, because I was seeing her often, you know, we build a um, relationship. We build a relationship and she started to talk to me, and in her talking to me, she was telling me about my life and telling me stuff that I'm like, how she knows this? You know, how does she know this? Because the enemy does, will know things, but it's not accurate because it's not the truth. Right? right. It's not the truth. Right. So, towards that, at some point, it's gonna crumble. Hey! Amen? That's good. That's good. That's good. So, this lady, you know, we, I finally, she invites me to her home. Um, I meet her son, I meet her daughter. Now, time passes and I become like family to her. She presented everything, you know, really nice. Um, by the time she brought me into her home, she even told me I was the daughter of a saint. Let me backtrack a little bit. She told me I was the daughter of a saint. So I'm like, I'm a daughter of a saint. That I never heard before. Um, I grew up mixed. I grew up confused. My father was Catholic. He used to light up candles and flowers for Jesus. My mother was Seventh-day Adventist. And me and my sisters were visiting Pentecostal. Yeah. So I, was, I grew up really confused. By the time I made the decision to, I backtracked a little bit, I'm sorry. By the time I made the decision to go to church, or to decide for myself, I leaned more towards the Catholic side, with my father's side, with the saints and, and lighting up candles for Jesus, that's what I thought was the right thing to do. So that's when I met the lady, and the lady introduced me and told me I was a some saint's daughter, 
And um, in the process, Pastor Jody's just, I think you just started serving the Lord, right? We were clashing. She just started serving the Lord, and I was uh, serving the Santos, <laughs> which, is, which is to be uh, witchcraft. It's brujeria. Wow. Yeah. But the way she introduced it to me was, everything I do, I do with God first and then the saints. So when she should do God, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything bad. That's good. I'm, That's I'm praying good. to you, Lord, and then I'm praying to the saints. That's so good. I'm good. not doing anything bad. So as time is pa passes by, now she's already got a, a, a stronghold over me. But I'm still not mindful of it. I'm just thinking, you know, our relationship, this is just a relationship, a friendship. Her kids are already turning on her and turning on me. It's causing division between my family my mother, my sisters, and I'm still not seeing it. Wow. Yeah. So here I have Kasajari is converted. I'm upset because she, to me, she was wasting her life. She used to, she used to wear these long um, skirts, a bun, <laughs> no makeup, and I'm like, this is church? I, no, then I'm, that's not for. I'm gonna stay on this side. This, that's not for. Me. I'm sorry, I love you. But I got. This is what happened to me. So I'm like, no. So mind you, you know, she has her music on. I would catch a headache. I would turn her music off, put my music on. Th those were the atmospheres in my home. It was chaotic, chaotic. So then we get to the we get to the point where now the lady has a stronghold over me. I'm creating baths. You know what banyas are? Yes. For good luck. Yes. I'm creating baths for cleansing. Wow. Yeah. me vaya toda malicia, so all the bad things can go away. <laughs> but things are getting worse for me. Things are getting worse for me instead of getting good for me. You know, I, my mother, it's already, forget it, like, I was looking at that lady like my mother. So it was causing a big division between my family. Wow. And that's not of God. Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know who Jesus was then. Amen? So, <laughs> so here I have Pastor Jody, you know, praying for me. I'm sleeping in, and we sleep in this, we used to sleep in the same room, side by side. She's sleeping in peace while my waters are turbulent because they're mixed. Because I didn't know who my enemy was. Because I didn't know who my opposer was. Those that were on my team were the ones I was against because I thought that the enemy was on my side. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. That's why you need to know who your opposer is. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So in the process, as I was saying, you get confused. When, you don't, when you're confused, you don't know which way to go. You don't know if you're going left. You don't know if you're going right. So everything is chaotic to you. And when it was chaotic for me, I got to a point where I'm like, I can't keep doing this. I'm praying to you and I'm praying to God. Who, who should I be praying to? I remember going to sleep and saying, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I was confused, completely chaotic and lost. So I went to bed that night crying because I'm like, I can't do this. Like, how can I be praying to God and how can I be praying to the saints? You know, people used to tell me, my eyes used to tell me all the time, there's only one God and God is jealous. Thank you, Lord. You can't serve two waters. You can't serve two dominions. Or two, a dominion in the kingdom. That's good. That's good. And I, I, I used to go in one ear come out the other. I was so, 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 so deeply rooted into the demonic realm and had no idea that I was serving the devil. So when I went to sleep that night, I remember I closed my eyes and I was crying. And I'm telling the Lord, Lord, I can't keep doing this. I can't. How can I be praying to you and praying to the enemy? To the to the enemy. I closed my eyes. It was dark. No, I'm lying. I closed my eyes and it was bright light. I would open it and the room was dark. And I would close my eyes again and there was light. So I'm like. What is this? Like, how can you close your eyes and it be light, bright light, bright light? I will open it and it's dark. That's when I saw the face of Jesus. Come on. I saw the face of Jesus and Jesus, the light, because he is light, told me clearly, 
Ven, mi hija, que tú no vas a sufrir más. Mi hija, come to my child, my daughter. You're not going to suffer anymore. Amen? So, we got you the strategies. By the way, I have Pastor um, Jahaira praying for me. At that time, I, that's how I met Pastor Natalie, who was her friend at the time, who was also, I'm sure, interceding for me. And then Pastor Lewis came along. There was three of them that God was already setting me up. <laughs> And like my spiritual father said, that fourth link, he was that fourth link that God used to seal everything. Amen. That God used by way of a boot camp. See, God knows you, so he knows how he's going to get, how he's going to, como te digo, to pull you in and to attract you. I love to work out, and I used to tell Pastor Jody all the time, I want to I wanna work out, but I want a personal trainer. <laughs> Got one. Yeah, we got that personal trainer. One time, Pastor Daddy came and said, um, I started boot camp. I was like, that, that already took my attention. That already took my attention. So when she brings me to the boot camp, I don't know that he's a pastor. I set me up. So days pass, week pass, you know, and I find out that then he's a pastor. So I told him, I said, you set me up. You set me up. So like Dad said, you know, he would, towards the end, give um, prayers or, yeah, he would pray, like just, I don't know, it was so peaceful. It was so peaceful. And he would gather with them three towards the end when everybody left and I would stay behind. And he would try to pull me in. I'm like, nah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> I'm good. Next day, the same thing. So finally, you know, I went into the conversation and, and God used him to tell me about my life. Again, I looked at her. I said, you told him my life? <laughs> I didn't believe. But Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit um, showed himself off and showed up. And here I am. So. <laughs> but it was a demonic entity behind her yeah. that okay. tried to take me out. Well, okay. I'm still here. Amen. I'm still here. Amen. Now I have more understanding, more authority. So here my testimony shows that you need to understand that there is an adversary. Yes. You need to acknowledge that you yourself are in a constant war. You need to know who your opposer is and the strategies used. There is always an atmosphere around you and you need to be aware of it. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. wow. <laughs> to backtrack a little bit, the reason why um, I mentioned for you to know your authority, you have to have the understanding and the essence of your authority is because let me paint a little picture for you of what my home looked like. The atmosphere in my home was white one minute, black the next minute. Because you had me in one side who I just came to Christ, so I have very little understanding and very little knowledge. But I had one thing, I had faith. Right, Pastor Eli? Amen. I stood on that word. Me and my house will serve the Lord. I hold on to that word. I may not have known anything else, but I hold on to that. And I played my Christian music as loud as I can play it. She would close the room door, but I played it even louder to see if it would go through her ear or something. <laughs> Not even understanding that how powerful sound can be. Yes. And even though it was irritating her, I didn't understand that it wasn't irritating her because she didn't like the music. Those things within her was not liking the music that was being played because they understood the battle that was being, that was in the home. Because yes, she may have been told that she was praying to God, but the one who was really praying to God was me. Amen. Amen. And not to boast myself up. I did it knowing that 
she was going to come one day because she had some level of reverence in the wrong area, but some level of reverence. And that's all God needs, just a little bit of wanting, of wanting that you want something of him, that you want to know something different. And that's what she, that's the only reason why this, this woman that was obviously used by the enemy was able to grasp her in because there was something different that she wanted in her life. The same reason why I came to Christ. I wanted something different in my life. Amen? Amen. So now we go into the atmosphere, right? The enemy is well known for using the atmosphere, for using air, for using water, for using even the people around you when it comes to the atmosphere to affect us. And that affects our, our mood, the way we act, the way we react, the way we talk, the way we move, everything. Our body language even reacts to the atmosphere. And sometimes we're not even aware of how we're reacting to the atmosphere. But the atmosphere is one of, one of, the, one of the things that when it comes to spiritual warfare that has the most effect on us, amen? amen. Our spiritual, our, our physical us. Let me clear that. So when it comes to the atmosphere, and it comes to a heavy atmosphere, it's easy for us to put blame on a physical being, right? If you do something to me, it's easy for me to put blame on you because I can see you. Mm. Our natural selves, it's, it's easier for us to feel better because now it justifies my feelings as to why hey, hey, now hey. I'm reacting to the atmosphere. Oh, that's good. Hey, Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. <laughs> so when it comes to the atmosphere, when things occur, we react, right? right? Whether it was anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's even being happy, because the atmosphere can be good too. Yeah. Right. But the way that we react is the way that the atmosphere continues. Yeah. If we react in a positive way, the atmosphere has the ability to, to get lighter and to get positive. If we react in a negative way, the atmosphere is going to get heavier. Why? Because we're carriers. Right. We're ambassadors. So we have more of an effect on the atmosphere than anybody else on the outside does. Good. If we understand that concept, we understand that when we walk into a room, like I said earlier, right. the room is heavy, but it gets heavier because we allow it to get heavier in us. Amen. Amen. So day by day, we know that the, when it comes to the atmosphere, let's think of the atmosphere as the sky. Right? Day by day, we have what? Pollution. Right? When it comes to the air. That's one thing that we're constantly always praying against. Every day we wake up, every day we're in a, in a warfare. There's not one day that you wake up and they're not in a warfare. When we understand that in our minds, we understand that we're constantly in prayer, we're constantly in intercession. That's why the intercession team, it's not an easy task, the task that they have. They're not just praying to pray. They are praying and standing in the gap. When you stand in the gap for someone, you're placing yourself in the front line right. from, what's, uh, from the person and what's coming towards them. Right. They place them spiritual selves on the line for us. Wow. So let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. So I wanted to go back a little bit into Elder Jen Dickensitia's teaching when it came to sound. When it, when it comes to physics, the hotter the air is, the hotter the, the air is, the atmosphere is, the faster a sound reaches. So when you speak a sound into the atmosphere, the hotter it is, the faster it gets its destination. The colder it is, the longer it takes. So the, let's flip that now into the physical aspect. The warmer we are when it comes to Christ, the faster the more impact we make when it comes to the sound that we make in the atmosphere. Hey! Now our words, because we're so connected, get to the destination faster rather than when we're further away from Christ. Our words are going, yes, they're getting there, but they're taking longer to get there. Wow, wow, that's, that's good. good, that's very good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. When it comes to the atmosphere also, it affects three parts of us. We're made up of three parts. And our spiritual dad spoke about this before. God bless you, man. Body, soul, and spirit. I'm gonna ask that Amber come here. Um, Johnny C. And oh, it's okay. I'm see, let's go! Yeah. <laughs> so each yeah, just face everybody. So each one of them has a role. Elder Tiffany is our physical body, our outer shell, what I'm seeing of you right now, what you're seeing of me right now. This is our physical body, she's the body, right? Janisi is the soul. That's where our emotions lie, what we feel, the things we take in on day to day. And Amber 
is the spirit in man. It's the spirit. Amen? The spirit is what's, what comes from God. It's eternal and it's connected to God. Amen? So every day based on the atmosphere, based on whatever is whispered into this area right here, between the soul and, and the body, is, is where the soul is where the soul is gonna go. The soul is in the middle, between the spirit and the body. The soul sometimes, depending on, on, on which way is stronger, is where the soul is gonna go. Right. Now, when it comes to the spirit, the more connected we are to God, the more we wanna fast, right? Because the kingdom is so upside down that the more the more we eat, right, the better the better more nutritious we are. When it comes to the kingdom, it's the opposite. The the, the less that we eat because we're fasting, the more connected we are, the more nutritious we are. Amen. All right, all right, all right, all right, good. So when we're in this area and we're reading the word and we're doing everything we need to do, the soul now begins to submit to the spirit. The body has no choice but to submit to the rest. Jesus, God. Now with the body. We begin to give the body what it needs because, you know, the enemy has his ways of wanting to now when we're in this area, wanting to whisper in our ears and tell us little things that we need to see, like, look at that person over there, they keep staring at you. Why are they staring at you? You know, what, what, what's wrong? Why are they staring at you? So what happens? In the soul, your emotions, it builds insecurity. It builds now anger when it comes to New York, right? You don't want to be stared at. Anger. The soul now comes this way because the soul's not responding. The spirit, what's funny about the spirit, because the spirit constantly belongs to God, the spirit is not going to team up. That's right. The spirit belongs to God regardless. But the spirit now becomes a little outnumbered. So it becomes a little difficult for you to now get to where you need to get in God. Yes. So the spirit grows not weaker, but the, the spirit becomes stagnant. Amen? Together with me? So these are things that, like illustrations to show you of what we go through every day. Every day we go through this body, soul, and spirit battle. So which side are you letting your soul team up with? I'm sorry. I'm oh, so which side are we letting our soul team up with? Our emotions, our feelings, things that we inhale, that we allow the enemy to whisper in our ears. Are we receiving it or are we tossing it out? The atmosphere creates those things. Feature. Now, are we the ones now, again, are we the ones allowing the soul to team up with the spirit to be able to create a positive atmosphere? Are we allowing our soul to team up with the flesh to now create a negative atmosphere. Yeah. Amen? Wow. This is why it is important to know this as well. We're a deliverance ministry. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many had deliverance in here before? Amen. I've had several. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that. Not perfect. Amen, but I'm being perfected. Thank you, Jesus. So when it comes to deliverance, your role as one who's conducting a deliverance and one who's interceding, the intercession role, the authority has to be key in what you speak. If you're interceding in an in, in, as far as when it comes to deliverance, you have to know that your connection with God has to be unbreakable in that moment. If you look to one side, you're distracted just lost that, that, that direct connection. And what happens is everything that you're supposed to be speaking into the atmosphere becomes mumbled up. Mm. You say one thing and in your mind you're saying, oh man, that's not what I was supposed to say. The enemy takes note of the little things when we mess up and he takes advantage of those moments, amen? amen. So the kingdom responds to the king. You cannot speak, declare into the atmosphere, the language of the kingdom, unless you yourself are moving in the authority of the kingdom. Amen. Good. If not, all your, all your words are basically good words with no authority. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So counteract, counterattack and action. Using your authority given to you by way of Holy Spirit. Knowing who you are in the kingdom. Knowing your identity. Knowing, knowing that the enemy cannot penetrate if you're deeply rooted, he can't penetrate. He can't come at you with the same old strategies that he used to use before. Right, right, right. Come on. Stay prayed up. Um, binding and loosing. <laughs> Sorry. Binding and loosing. Declaring as a royal priesthood and decreeing as kings and queens. See, the enemy can't come at me trying to infiltrate about my spiritual parents or the flow kingdom ministry. Amen. Why? Because I know who I am. I'm a daughter first. I know who I am in the Lord, first of all. Second of all, if he used this man of God to pull me out of the streets and to pull me out of the 
darkness. So how is it that he can be not walking in, not walking right? So he can't infiltrate that. And nobody can take that away from me either. Because I experienced that. Amen. So you need to know who you are. You need to speak with authority. And understanding the power given to you by, by Holy Spirit. Understanding who you are in the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We need to we 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 retaliate when we retaliate flesh and blood. Wait, when you retaliate flesh and blood with flesh and blood, you are fighting demonic with demonic, darkness with darkness, and there's no resolution. Wow. Right. That's why love is the ultimate cure for situations like this because love is the language of kingdom. Right. Amen. 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 Let's stand. That's good. The goal tonight, the goal of every night, the goal every time that anyone comes up here, whether it be dad, whether it be mom, whether it be one of, any one of our brothers and sisters that come up here to host, to speak up, even if it's an um, exhortation of a word or speak a word or a teaching, it's never to grab the mic and look cute. It's to grab the mic and make an impact on each and every one of you, spiritually, mentally, physically. Because the point of church is for what? To come in, yeah, broken sometimes, come in messed up, but to walk out restored. To walk out delivered. To walk out healed. To walk out whole. So we invite you tonight. If this word spoke to your heart and the deepest part of your soul, your spirit, to come to the front. Because there's some times where there's some ingredients that when it comes to Christianity that we, we may not understand or we may not get the fullness of or we were never taught. I know because I was there. There was many things that I was battling, but I wasn't battling with the understanding. It took for someone to teach me about authority, to teach me about the kingdom, to teach me about declaring and decreeing, to tell me that I am a royal priesthood, that I am a queen under the king, to know that what I'm saying is not just words going into the air, but to understand that when I say what I say, it's making an impact, not just in the atmosphere, but in the place in where I'm saying it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So the front is open for anyone who, who wants prayer, who wants that word spoken over them when it comes to authority, understanding that the authority that you have is given to you by the same God that lives in you. Jesus. The same God that loves you, the same God that saved you, is the same God that gives you the authority day to day to get through your day, to get through your week, and not to just survive, but to live life and live yes. life abundantly. Because that was what we were told, that we were going to live life and live it abundantly, not just survive day to day and get through the day. I don't want to get through the day. I want to be able to make an impact in my days. Amen. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to ask the elders and the pastors and dad, the invitation is yours if you want it, <laughs> to come to the front and help us minister. Amen?